Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be working on the white MR2. The original plan was actually to start installing some suspension modifications. So I got some top hats. This is more replacement because the car needs new end links. I had plans to also tweak some other things, but unfortunately when I pulled the car out of storage, the battery light started flickering on and off. Before doing the suspension mods, I really got to figure out what's going on with the charging system on this car. We're going to start off with the low hanging fruit. Off camera, I went ahead and already charged the battery and I even had it load tested just to make sure. The load test told me the battery was good, which is no surprise since it's not even that old. It was made in 2021. The car has been sitting overnight. So before we even started up to check how the alternator power output is, I'm going to double check that this thing's still fully charged. We got one side hooked up to the positive terminal. It's currently at zero. We're going to hook it up to the negative side. I know the red cord's in the way, but it leads us to about 12.8. So this thing's fully charged still. The battery's still fully charged. So odds are it's not a parasitic train. What I'm going to do now is that uh, we're going to go inside the car, turn it on, and then we'll check to see what the power output is like. Okay. The battery light is still on. What we're gonna do now is check to see the output at the battery and that'll give us an idea if the alternator is um, charging enough. We're hooking the positive side back up. I'm just gonna stick it in there. We got our negative over here. Right now it's still currently reading zero and it's about 14.4. So this is definitely charging quite a bit like it should be. That looked good, but just to be sure, what I'm gonna do is actually uh, turn on all the lights and put the AC on full blast to see how it is under load. We are turning on the lights. I'm gonna turn on the AC all the way. I'll also turn on the radio, but I'll do that off camera because I don't want to get hit with the copyright strike. Now it's sitting right where it should be, so there's no issue there. Based off that test, I think the alternator is gonna be good, but I have had situations where the alternator was fine there, but then when I took it off and actually like bench tested it or uh, took it into the the auto parts store to get it load tested it was bad i went ahead and disconnected the battery next the plan is to go ahead and just pull out the alternator to get it bench tested i should be able to get it out through here i'll just have to take off the side cover the cruise control it's tight but there'll be enough room to kind of pull it out through um, this little area right here time to get started on taking this car apart it's really not going to take much it's going to be a screwdriver a 10 mil socket and i think i might need a 12 a couple extensions and that's pretty much it unfortunately i can't really show too much just because the space is really really tight in there what i can do is just kind of explain it and hopefully that helps people i'll remove the side cover via these two screws i'll make sure to remove the ground as well that's a 10 and then for the cruise control what i'll do is i'll take off these two screws and then there's a few bolts that hold it in place there's one right here one against the strut tower right here and then there's one on the back side of the engine bay right there after that i'll move this over to the side and then that'll give me access to remove the alternator there's just a ten two tensioner bolts you loosen those up obviously undo the wire that goes to the back of the alternator and there's one last bolt that holds it in then you pull it all out i know it'd be better to see it but <laughs> given the space constraints it's yeah it's just kind of hard to do that The cruise control module and the side panel are out of the way. Um, pretty much the last thing I'll have to take out before I get to the alternator is just this, which I should just be able to pull on out. All right, there you go. I'll just throw this off to the side. That's gonna give me the room that I need to uh, pull it out. It is a tight space, but I wanted to give you a better view of the area that I'm working with. That's obviously my phone for some lighting. Right here are the tension bolts for the alternator. On the back side of the alternator, which you really can't see, there's a bolt where the two uh, charging cords connect to. And then on the bottom of the alternator, there is a bolt, which is just like a pivot bolt um, that kind of just holds it in place. That bottom bolt can be a bit of a challenge to get to so I may end up having to jack up the car and just kind of get it from underneath. Well, we got some bad luck. The alternator's not coming out through the top. We got the thing out, but it's such a tight squeeze that it's like almost there. If it had like an extra inch, this would easily come out. Kind of right now I have two options. I could just loosen up the alternator bracket and just set it off to the side, or I could just lower the subframe. To be honest, I have doubts if the alternator can be squeezed out by just lowering the subframe. So I think what's actually gonna end up happening is I just take off the subframe. Um, it's easy access to the alternator at that point. And on top of that, there are some other like little jobs I've been meaning to do. I just haven't done them because well, I've been a little lazy. Like the oil pan, I know that it seeps a little bit 
bit and it's a really tiny leak like in between oil changes i don't have to top it off so anyways it's just a good chance to go on there and get some of those other things done for the subframe it should be pretty easy i just loosen up these bolts here if we come down to the middle there is the engine mount bolts right there three of them and then if i have to take off the subframe completely there's two ball joint bolts right here and over here at this end there is a bolt for the uh, lower control arm i'll just set up the camera and we'll uh, go from there We did all that just to pull this bad boy out. Well, it's been a little bit since that last clip. I ended up taking the alternator down to the parts store to get load tested. The alternator got tested twice and it passed, which left me scratching my head. I went back through the footage and noticed that the tensioner was at the far end of its adjustment. That made me think that maybe it was the belt. But if it was the belt, I was thinking that I should have had the voltage be lower than where it was at. Anyways, I had to face the inevitable and conclude that it's probably an electrical issue. And for those who don't know, um, some years ago, before I started doing YouTube videos, this car actually caught fire. If I can find the picture, I'll uh, put it up on the screen. After the fire, I did end up making repairs myself, but I had to splice into quite a bit. This is one wire, that's another wire. Here's the a wire for the vacuum switch valve. So a lot of stuff in this area got messed up including this. Yeah, it's quite a bit. I mentioned all that because I assumed that the work that I had previously done was uh, failing and that was the cause of it, which honestly would make sense. I mean, I'm not a professional mechanic. I'm, I'm just a guy who likes to work on cars. After poking around everything though, I come to find out that it was actually some of the older wiring on this car. So here is the plug for the alternator. I hope it's not too washed out. Prongs in there are actually corroded. Then coming up a little bit higher, this loom has actually broken and the wiring in there's torn open as well. There are multiple areas of the harness that need to be repaired. Right now I'm kind of torn on what to do. My first thought is I can fix this. It's not like the most challenging thing in the world. I just have to be very diligent and careful as I'm doing it. More than anything, it would just be a little bit time intensive, but nothing crazy. There's the other part of me that feels like it may be just easier just to leave the car alone until I get around to putting a new engine in it. The only reason I'm so hesitant for that is that I'm not in the position to do it. I don't really have the workspace. What you guys see here right now, that's the space I have to work with. Right now I am leaning towards just waiting. I think it makes a lot more sense to take my time and do things right. I mean, I do have a really, really big emotional attachment to this car. I mean, it was the car that I daily drove all through college, started dating my girlfriend in, etc. So lots of memories with this thing. Also, I own it outright. Like there's no rush. This thing can sit for 10 years and it's not like the bank's going to come take it away from me. Next, I'm going to clean up my mess and just call it a day. So that's all I got for the video. Let me know your guys' thoughts on this. I mean, you already know which way I'm leaning, but I'd love to hear other people's opinions with that. See you guys in the next video.